Hey guys, and welcome to a run of Spelunky that I did off camera. Well, I guess not off camera, that's the wrong word for it, but without commentary. Uh, here's the deal I was uh, wanting to play some Spelunky, but I could not at the time because there was a bunch of background noise in my house. But people have been telling me, hey man, record your off camera runs. And if something crazy happens, then you can post commentate it. So I was like, yeah, you know what, why not? So I just hit record on DX Story and then played as if nobody was watching me. And uh, as it turns out, something crazy happened in this run. It was the first one I had ever tried recording. And uh, I'm really glad I did. I don't want to spoil anything. Like, I feel like it's spoilerly, spo <laughs> spoilerly just that I uh, am post commentating this. But there's a lot of things that could have happened that would make me want to uh, post commentate it. And I'm obviously not going to say which one, but you know could have beat hell, could have just gotten to hell really, not necessarily beaten it, uh, could have like gone to the the uh, place and gotten the plasma cannon, could have beaten old bitey in the jungle, you know there are a number of accomplishments that uh, would have made me interested in posting this, or it could have just been like a ridiculous death on the way to the end as well. Uh, you know, a number a number of possibilities here, so I don't want you guys to pigeonhole this into like, oh, you obviously did X. But uh, we'll just watch what's going on. So pretty good first floor so far. We're at 18 bombs. That bomb box right off the bat made me really enthousi enthusiastic about this run right away. Uh, just a lot of bombs to start off with, which is really nice. And we're just going to make sure we clean up all the treasure here. I use that pot block the arrow, take the arrow with me, just in case there's an arrow trap on the next floor. And we're leaving the first floor with actually you know, a substantial amount of advantages. We got one health from Monty, we got 18 bombs, we're down to three ropes, but you know, big fucking deal, right? Uh, so we're going to take the skull with us, because it can actually kill things, unlike the broken arrow. And move on here, use the skull immediately to miss the <laughs> spider, because I am apparently the worst throw of all time. But anyway, see there's an idol down there behind the shopkeeper, which is kind of a piss off. But at the same time, you know, look at that shop. Does this guy think he's going to leave here alive today? Look at, the, look at this bullshit. We got a cape, spring shoes, and a pitcher's mitt. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> We're going to kill that man, take all of his stuff, and move onward here. Uh, we might end up going back to that altar... Uh, if we can find Joby soon enough, but already it would cost a rope to get back up there, which is kind of steep when we only have three. Oh! That was uh, a surprise. <laughs> Didn't see that arrow trap until it was too late. But luckily, Spring Shoes made me jump over the arrow. So really good that I just picked those up. And we're going to find the lock chest as well, and hopefully find the key. Just like right down here. Because, again... Oh, actually, we just picked up ropes. Never mind, I'm a big dumb idiot. We now have six ropes, which is uh, enough to make it worthwhile to do some backtracking, possibly. But the key's right here, so we don't necessarily need to. It's a tough choice whether it's worth it to take Joby all the way back up. We'd probably need two or three ropes and a bomb to access that altar. I thought about, like, going in there and trying to get that gold bar, and then I realized I would just push the thing on top of the gold bar, so there's no point in dealing with that anyway. I'm gonna bait the spider out. And now we have to get around this arrow trap without fucking it up. So we're going to approach from the top here. I'm going to use this rock instead of the shotgun because I think it's easier to drop rocks down holes like that. And indeed, we're going to do that. Pick up the key. Grab the Ujet Eye. And at this point, I'm kind of thinking, you know, Ghost might be on his way. We've spent a long time on this floor doing various activities. So it might be best to just take Joby to the exit and not fuck around trying to get him all the way back up to that idol. And we're going to grab our shotgun as well and move onward to the next floor. Doing extremely well. Lots of items already. Cape and um, cape and spring shoes this early in the game is a big deal. As well as we already have the Ujedi. We have a ton of bombs. Things are just looking great. We need paste. But uh, this is a spider level, so... You know, success there. I don't know why I was even fucking with that situation. Uh, I just wanted to look a little bit further over to the right, I guess. But nothing too interesting over there that we can see. We're going to float up here. This is actually really dumb because I realized looking at, back at it uh, that I could have just gotten up there from the left way easier. But I wanted to show off. You know, I wanted to do that clutch cape drift jump into the just barely reachable cliff to pick up an extra 15k an extra pointless 15k because we are angering shopkeepers that was a little bit scary for a moment getting that close to the spikes but we're fine 
Uh, of course, all you have to do is turn the cape on and you become immune to spikes, but you know, sometimes that doesn't happen. I'm seeing if I can like sneak a shotgun bullet down there, but uh, no, and then I remember I can just push it down here, so no big deal. So we'll blow that up, blow the other one up. That powder keg took a second after being shot to blow up, or is it just me? Anyway, I'm gonna move onward here. And here's the giant spider pit. That guy's pretty much stuck. I don't think he can leave there no matter what. Because he's he's too fat to make it through either of those entrances. But now the the question is, yeah, see the recoil fucked me there. I was trying to just shoot this guy. Oh god, and then I dropped the shotgun. What am I gonna do? And uh, I decided that the the best course of action here is just to jump on this guy's head repeatedly because getting adjacent to him to hit him with the shotgun is real fucking dangerous right now. But actually, the position he was in made it really easy to just kill him with jumps. So we're gonna kill this one with a bomb because there's no real way around it. I should have probably done that to the first one as well, but hey, live and learn, lost two health, big deal. And now I'm just like, fuck dude, <laughs> how am I gonna approach this? I'm gonna, just gonna drop Joby down there, and let him fend for himself, because there's too much shit to worry about right now. And um, it's actually probably dumb to do that. But I didn't want to like accidentally have him up here and like blow him up or like fall down there and have to use a rope to come back and get him. And whoops, there he goes. <laughs> oh well, doesn't really matter. And here's the terrible chill. And now I'm like, all right, well, that's bad. <laughs> Let's just hit him once with the shotgun and get the fuck out of there. Hopefully we didn't miss anything on the left. But uh, it's pretty much the best way that situation could have gone. We wouldn't have gotten Joby out anyway. The ghost would have made that absolutely impossible. So I don't feel too bad about throwing him to his death. Here's a dude. He's not happy with uh, the fact that I killed some of his friends. So we're going to bomb our way into his shop from the top. And then hopefully... Ah, and I forget that I have the fucking pitcher's mitt, which is always annoying. I honestly don't like the pitcher's mitt that much. I'm going to be straight up. I think I'm going to stop taking it or, like, try to. It's hard sometimes to not accidentally pick it up, and I don't hate it. But I feel like it's overall a negative for me because I'm so used to the arcs of the bombs. And the arcs actually, you know, they have their own advantages. There are times when you want to arc your bomb and times when you want to chuck your bomb straight. And I feel like most of the time I have a shotgun which means that if I'm gonna throw a bomb straight ahead I, I can probably just shoot it with the shotgun and if I can't then usually I can figure out a way to just throw the bomb properly and like even on uh, Yama that one time I fought him didn't really seem that handy to like you know I didn't have the pitcher's mitt right and I didn't need it it's, it's not that hard you know because you don't want to get up next to him because then the skulls fall on you and you fall into the lava and die but anyway we're gonna move on to the jungle here after fucking around with that shopkeeper. And uh, we're doing doing quite well. We have a lot of the like standard roster. God, that was a scary interaction with that Tiki Trap. I just I couldn't like make myself let go of the sprint button. I was too scared. But anyway, we're gonna come up here just in case we don't Ooh, and there's an altar up there, but it's kinda difficult to access. Uh, so we're probably gonna ignore that one too. I remember there being a lot of altars on this run. They're like yeah, there's an altar, but uh, it would take so many resources to get to it that fuck it. <laughs> it's not worth it, unfortunately. But that's okay. I was kind of trying to snipe the shopkeeper, but I think he was already dead. Because he spawned right next to that tiki trap. Which is, uh, you know, really handy. I'm going to come up here, grab a nice, easily accessible Joby. I could try to take him all the way back up to that altar we saw earlier, but again, I don't really think it's worth it. We're going to take this guy's shotgun and leave our own up there because I'm lazy. And we didn't hear the black market blinking at all, so we should be all good. We'll move on to jungle two. Just basically coasting at this point. This this is the kind of run that's really good. You get a bunch of stuff on the mines, and then you don't even have to worry for the rest of the game. Like, we, we have our items. All we need now is a bunch of bombs. That's pretty much, you know, a jetpack would be nice. And there are some other items, you know, climbing gloves might be good as well. But really, we have our we have our basics. We have our cape. We have our spike shoes, we have our paste, and uh, we have our spring shoes, and I feel like those are the major set of items that are, dictate success, except for, of course, a lot of bombs. So we saw the U-Jedi blinking, and I'm not sure if it's up or down yet. 
This motherfucking frog god, come on. There we go. Frogs, one of the most annoying enemies in the entire game for me. I'm so bad with them. So I'm looking around, I'm like, okay, Ujedi does not appear to be blinking anymore, so it's gotta be up. And, uh, so we're doing some jumping. There's, look at that fucking altar. There's no way to sacrifice a damsel on that altar without first killing the damsel. Because the damsel is going to get hit. And we see the entrance there, but I missed my throw a little bit, so we're going to have to use an additional bomb in, the, in there. I'm going to use a rope to get up here. And see, look at this shit, because you don't want to try to blow up the tiki trap, right? Because if you blow up a tiki trap, you run a substantial risk of accidentally, uh, kill, uh, like, uh, blowing up the altar, and then Kali's pissed off at you, and you got spiders everywhere. And it's just a bad thing. But, uh, regardless, I'm going to, like, come and experiment with this altar, because I'm, I'm, I think, at this point, that you can't sacrifice anything without killing it, and I confirmed it to myself there by throwing that dead dude on the altar. Was, he got hit by a spike trap before he got sacrificed. So it was like, there's no point in going and like spending bombs to go and get Joby and bringing him to the altar. And here we go, the scariest part. This is a, kind of a shitty black market layout, I feel, because it's one of those ones where like, they can pretty easily jump out and just fuck you in the beginning. And they, they can easily jump that high. So it's scary, but I'm just gonna do some shooting here. And I uh, got really lucky, kind of. I see that guy over there, and uh, I hate that. <laughs> so we're gonna blow this up. <gasps> okay, <laughs> he's dead. This is harrowing watching this again, and I remember how it goes. This fucking black market, man. It's the scariest part of a Spelunky run, having to kill every shopkeeper. And I really do feel like you do have to kill every shopkeeper. There's no... You're not going to succeed at hell without all of those bombs. It's really important. Un unless you get really lucky with bomb shops uh, elsewhere. Oh, fuck. <laughs> those guys just murdered the shit out of that hired help. Anyway, we're going to kill them. Luckily, everything went fine. We're going to look at the third floor. A uh, bunch of items I already have. And a machete. So, fuck that. We're going to bomb our way down to the bottom here. And this one's a little bit scary too, but he is, he's right next to this tiki trap, so I kind of have a feeling that he's going to sort himself out. Let's see. Yeah, he's put himself in a terrible position now. It's, uh, but why did I come down here? That was terrifying. But he got stuck in the spider web and we're going to take off regardless. That was a scary engagement to watch, man. <laughs> There's always the most harrowing part of any hell run is just the black market. Having to kill all of those shopkeepers. They're so crazy and unpredictable, you never know what they're going to do. So here we are on the Dead or Restless level. We've got the uh, Crystal Skull Joby Pavilion over here. And I'm considering it, but uh, you know I kind of want to clear out the rest of the floor first. See what we're dealing with, because it might take me until the ghost comes just to deal with the shopkeeper. Who knows? Sometimes the layout with the shopkeeper is really shitty and takes a lot of time to deal with safely. I'm just wandering around seeing seeing if I can find the uh, the castle level more than anything else because it's it's a really big advantage to have an exit to the level that's not right next to uh, a shopkeeper. <laughs> you know, just not having to deal with this guy. There's a lot of bombs saved and a potential loss uh, averted. But I didn't actually see the castle level, so instead... I'm gonna like try throw that. I don't know what I thought that bomb was gonna do, honestly. But uh, now we've angered him, and now we just have to hope that he jumps onto our bombs. We're gonna start wasting bombs again. Shopkeepers are a big bomb investment. That's that's the main issue with killing them. You know, it's it's very tough to kill them without just paste bombs. But he's gonna run on top of that, and as a result, we're gonna come over here and go pick up Joby. Climb up this rope. And use a couple of bombs to get in here. We do have 44 bombs, so it's pretty worth it to trade two bombs for one health, generally speaking. Let's pop in here. And uh, also a bunch of free money in here. Might as well boost my score, you know, why not? Do want to see that good leaderboard position. And also, like, my, uh, <laughs> my leaderboard position, as far as just normal runs, is way worse than my leaderboard position... Um, for daily challenges 
or not not leaderboard position, but like leaderboard, uh, just my top score basically. I because daily challenge doesn't count for your normal high score, so my daily challenge score is like what, two hundred fifty, three hundred k, and my normal run score is like hundred and twenty k, which is kind of silly. Oh, that's the thing that happened to me before. Did you see that? I was jumping up. And I tried to shoot right, and my guy turned around at the same moment. I remember that happening and being pissed off about it. That's how I died to Anubis in a recent daily challenge. I don't know why that happened. It's got to be like like a issue with my controller or something. Like something was held down wrong. But anyway, it looks like this guy <laughs> spawned on top of a mine. I was really sad to see this because it's like that's the ideal sort of sort of thing to see after you uh, after you pop the onk because you know you you can pick up a, a shotgun from it when normally that's you know not an option on the ice caves a shotgun almost always just gets lost to the abyss it's really rare for it to end up on the ground where you can take it and it's so nice to have one uh going into the temple because so you don't have to like use bombs to <clears throat> until you find the scepter but anyway we're uh i'm just looking around this floor i want to make sure i'm not missing the head of course and also free joby here and i wanted to make sure i wasn't missing an altar to put him on but it doesn't appear so so we'll just take it I mean, we're about to kill ourselves, so the extra health is not that necessary, but if I can do it relatively for free, why not? Something terrible could happen. You can get juggled in the ice caves. It's not a, not a bad thing necessarily to have more health, though most of the things that kill you in the ice caves are instant kills, which is what makes it such a, such a scary area despite being so easy. Like, there's, especially with a cape, it's so hard to die in the ice caves, but if you do it, you you did it like either you, you will if you fuck up once like that was really close for example the that uh, that explosion from the alien dude instant kill nothing you can do about it we're gonna pop a rope here to get to a crate and it turns out wow there are actually three crates up here so really good thing we came up here there's a bomb box which is a huge deal brings us ba back up to 54 bombs that's really nice to see this late in the game we're also gonna pick up some ropes and trade one bomb for. A parachute! Yay! Definitely uh, not redundant at all with our cape. There's another Joby hanging out in the water there. And we did see the head earlier on this level, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there it is. Uh, so we do want to just make sure to, uh, to kill ourselves on this floor, but just get every advantage we can first. And I, I decided to get a little cheeky with this, uh, this mammoth as a result. Oh no! Sorry about that, my... Uh, video recording actually lagged for a second which is a, obviously a big problem from a syncing perspective so I had to you know deal with that but uh, I restarted the recording but anyway I got cheeky with that mammoth because you know dying wouldn't have mattered so I probably should have died there to be honest with you anyway we're gonna move on we're gonna pick up a Joby as well because you know starting you know, this is like one of the most important Jobies in the game I feel because starting with five health instead of four on the temple is really nice we're gonna take the Joby to the exit, and I feel like I've been all throughout this floor, so I try to drop to my death, and that fucking parachute I got earlier just ruins everything. So we're gonna kill ourselves, we're gonna move back into the Ankh head, we're gonna pick up the hedget, not accidentally go through the door immediately, which is something I'm now petrified of doing every single time. I'm like, really, I like, take my hands off the controller for a second, because that scares me so much. This fucking rock is uh, scary and also like why would I jump through it like that I don't I, I remember doing that and just being like whoa I should have taken damage and there's another parachute so we get to get that back from last time thank god right that's definitely gonna be real important later on the, is, having a parachute with a cape is weird to me because I often accidentally pop it because I do a lot of like dropping and then immediately triggering my cape before landing so I'll like fall far enough to take fall damage and then stop and the cape will proc in the in the middle of that, so it's like almost a detriment to me. Anyway, I'm gonna come up here and make use of this little dog holding facility because I do want to come down here and get this crate, but it's a, it's risky business a little bit. So I'm gonna pop that thing and come down here with climbing gloves and grab these bombs. Moment of truth, get out of there just fine. Pull back over here and grab our Joby. Though we do have to be careful, and I actually, yeah, I remember, like, hang on a second, there's a shopkeeper down here, so I don't want to be trying to hold on to Joby while I deal with this situation. So we're going to throw some bombs. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> uh, we stick him perfectly with a bomb. He goes down without even really noticing what's going on. 
You, with his dying breath, he shouts that I'll pay for my crimes, but uh, it didn't work out that way for him. And we're going to get our Joby to the exit. Unfortunately, his shotgun was lost to the ether, as they usually are on the ice caves, but that's okay. So we're going to move forward a little bit here. There's the, uh, the spaceship level, but honestly, that place freaks me out a little bit. I've been there twice off camera, and both times I've died very quickly. There's a lot of instant kills there. So definitely don't want to do it on a promising hell run like this. We've got the headshot, we've got 52 bombs, and pretty much every item I could ask for. The jetpack is like the major concern for us. Everything else is pretty much taken care of. This motherfucker right here is in an awkward position, but luckily that one nails him. Because it would have been really difficult to do that without the platform there. And a really convenient Joby over here. We're going to pick him up and enter the temple with 7 health, actually, which is unusual after killing yourself for the Ankh if you don't have uh, the Kapala. This is probably the, the best I've done health gathering wise after popping the Ankh. So here we are in the temple. And obviously, we've got to look for Anubis here, pick up his scepter, and move onward. I nail that dude with a bomb just fine. This parrot dude's freaking me out a little bit, but Spike Shoes takes care of that, no problem. And here we are on the temple. This is a scary place. The, the temple, you know, you can get all the way to the temple and then immediately die from bullshit <laughs> sometimes. So it's always a little bit nerve-wracking being here with the hedget. Anything could happen. Just fucking crazy, crazy bullshit. The scepter landing on a swamp happened to Austin recently. <laughs> Stuff like that. Or just getting juggled or like, you know... Tiki Trap hitting you into an Anubis Sphere. Those things are instant kills, no matter what. So you really have to be careful of those Anubis things. And I am definitely doing that here. Very scared about what's going to happen to me. But luckily, works out just fine. We managed to stick two bombs to Anubis really quickly. For some reason, that really pissed off the shopkeeper. I don't know why he's mad about me killing Anubis. But uh, here we go, I guess. So he's just hanging out down there. And I'm just gonna try to launch some bombs in from up here. And he's gonna promptly run away. <laughs> ah, man. It's a, it's a tough shot, for sure. Ah, man. Okay, he got hit by something. Oh, God, Fireman! Just barely saw that out of the corner of my eye. I was totally focusing on the bottom corner of the screen. And now after that happens, I'm like, well, fuck. Now I can't stand there either. What do I do? Blowing a lot of bombs on this guy. The, this guy was probably the hardest shopkeeper I had to deal with all game, besides, you know, the black market. Which wasn't really a shopkeeper. Like, no individual black market shopkeeper was this hard. It was just a combination of all of them. But I do finally stick him. I'm gonna come over here and pick up a bunch of free money, because I can't resist. I'm gonna grab the scepter. Watch out for fireman. But also a bunch of free money down here as well. And here we go, on to Temple 2 with the scepter. Getting close. To a very successful run here and I'm really scared about using the scepter here so the, the scepter is a dangerous beast you don't want to use it on anything without a corpse it, I think is the main thing and I just stick that guy with a bomb and then he immediately dies to a tiki trap so the bomb just stays stuck to nothing but uh, you as you see here if the dude has a corpse no big deal because the uh, the purple thing will be occupied with him but if he doesn't have a corpse if you use it to kill like a mummy uh, then the fucking scepter bullet is just gonna like flail around like mad which is really scary and uh you know i'm looking around here i'm like okay I'm, i'll pick up a joby i don't have a problem with picking up a joby but i don't want to deal with anything else on this floor and i'm afraid that's gonna kill joby but luckily it doesn't pick him up and move him to the exit here and move on i do take a broken arrow with me just in case we need it at the beginning you spawn next to some bull bullshit arrow traps or something. But for the most part, at this part, point in the game, I like I don't care about anything. I just want to rush to all of the advantages I can get as soon as possible. We're going to pick up this Joby and also move over that way in general. Kind of get some more vision of the level. Being really careful, looking carefully for those golden thwomps, which I see over there. And I'm like, alright, I don't even I don't want to go near that direction. Thwomps scare the shit out of me, man. They're vicious, vicious traps. One shot kills, and you can easily just not see them coming. So here's the Necronomicon. The Necronomonom nom, excuse me. We're gonna pick it up. 
in a second. We def definitely do want to take care of this motherfucking mummy. No big deal. And at this point, you know, in the past I've wanted to like open this whole area up, but I've learned like Anubis 2 always spawns at the top. So what I'm gonna do here is just pick it up and double bomb, and he's dead. No big deal. Anubis 2, almost no threat if you have pace bombs, and uh, just approach him smartly. But uh, the much more dangerous issue here is this shopkeeper. I'm like, okay, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself, yes! So we don't even have to deal with him. And uh, we get a free shotgun moving on to the Olmec fight with the Necronomicon, assuming nothing terrible happens here. This is looking really carefully around for Thwomps, and actually uh, got the Casanova ach achievement for rescuing some absurd number of damsels in one game, simply because there were no altars anywhere. Uh, well, that, that's not true. There were a bunch of altars early game, but no, uh, no easily accessible ones, no ones that were worth it. So I ended up not uh, utilizing those. But here we go, we're moving on to Olmec with a whole lot of stuff. Looking good. Looking good for getting to hell. You know, anything could happen on the Olmec fight. Things can go terribly, terribly wrong. But it's looking promising for sure. We've got 31 bombs. Not as many bombs as I would like, honestly, but enough. Enough to beat Olmec at the very least. Also 11 ropes just in case we need to go up a whole lot for some reason. And uh, basically, again, every item we could possibly want. We've got paste, we've got climbing gloves, we've got the cape, we've got the compass, we've got spike shoes, spring shoes, pitcher's mitt even though I don't like it that much. Yeah, we're just gonna hop around up here, really hope that we run into a bomb box or so something like that. So we did get a few bombs there, but nothing, you know, nothing too terribly exciting. Another parachute, definitely, you know, really handy to have. In conjunction with the cape, of course. Just looking around, not actually a whole bunch of crates this Olmec fight, unfortunately. I th I'm pretty sure I got them all. And now we're just looking around. We know that the uh, the Necronom Nom Nom was nomming away over roughly where Olmec is now, actually. Let me kill that parrot. Accidentally popped the parachute exactly how I said I would. Just like, it pops before I decided to use my cape. So we're going to lure him all the way over here so we don't accidentally bait him back. And then I'm going to jump wide over him so he doesn't start coming. Oops. <laughs> He's gonna start coming over, so we're gonna make sure we get him all the way against this wall this time. And then we're gonna go wide around him so that he doesn't follow us this way. Because the worst thing would be like, you're in the middle of excavating your Olmec trap over hell, and suddenly Olmec comes and stomps on top of your head. That would be the most depressing shit. So we know exactly where the, uh, where the pit is gonna be, and we're just gonna start excavating. Use a substantial number of bombs, because it's totally worth it. You don't want to fuck up at this point. <laughs> Just getting to hell is a big advantage. I don't know why I stood next to that bomb for so long. I didn't even realize that at the time. What was I doing? That was terrifying to watch. I was just standing within range of getting instant killed by my own bomb. But, uh, you know, luckily, everything went okay. There's the door to hell down there. And we've got a nice little pattern going on. We'll just keep on bombing one bomb left, bo one bomb right, until we have our nice little Olmec shaft going down to the entrance to hell. Pop a rope just in case something terrible happens down here. It's not really necessary because we do have climbing gloves, but hey, you know, shit happens. Uh, I want to get both of these blocks with one bomb, but it's actually not going to happen, so we're going to use one more bomb to bomb the last square, and that is our Olmec shaft. And now we come back over, we get on our noble seed. Here we go, Olmec. No, not that way. Onward. This is the most nerve-wracking part, because it's like, what if I fucked up? What if we don't get to the entrance to hell? What if something went terribly wrong? What if a lava man jumps on my head like he almost did, but we just barely make it into hell? It was a... Uh, the shaft was a little bit off, and I almost didn't manage to get in there. But here we are. We are in hell. There's a damsel and another damsel. It's like a fucking... God, what's that movie where there's the damsels? Or not the tables, but the like clones, and you have to figure out which one is right. I don't know. I, I'm gonna stop trying to make pop culture references. We're gonna kill Vlad here, stick him with a bomb right in his dumb Vladdy face, and he's dead. Cape's in a bad spot. I don't really want it anyway. I feel like Vlad's cape, like it's really good being able to double jump, but also like not necessary really, and it kind of fucks me up. 
you know, uh, because like with the cape, I'm so used to making minute adjustments to my flight pattern by just like, you hit the A button and you start floating. That's how it works. And um, it can really fuck me up and make me jump back into things that I didn't want to be in or accidentally jump on top of something to have that double jump. So I, I actually think it might be better for me to avoid it. But definitely Vlad's amulet, essential on hell. It's really important. So here we go. We've got a shopkeeper, maybe, but it looks like no, he's already dead. There's a shotgun. Oh, and there's he, him on the uh, on the right side over there. So something terrible happened to him. He probably got like Tiki trapped into the spinning spike trap, if I had to guess. That's the nice thing about hell, you know. It's so fucking dangerous that the shopkeepers often find themselves in awful situations as well. We're gonna grab this crate so it doesn't accidentally fall in the lava when we open it. Get some ropes out of there. Yeah, 16 ropes, definitely necessary on hell. Uh, there's another damsel. But uh, again, I just don't trust damsels on hell. I don't want to fuck with it. <laughs> I, just, I don't know still to this day what succubuses do, except that it sounds like a mimic in Dark Souls, which is definitely not something that I'm excited about. And at this point, I'm starting to realize, fuck, man, I only have 16 bombs left. I have to start being a little bit more judicious with how I use these to get through the level because uh, I'm not going to have enough to just skip every level. So I have to kind of pick my battles, pick the things that I really don't want to deal with. Uh, plus, we still have to battle shopkeepers, and bombs are really important for that. The shotgun's good, but there are a lot of situations where you don't want to uh, have to be on an even plane with him. You want to throw the bombs down. And, uh, you know, I really did feel as though that I needed to take out those two Tiki traps and just do this as well. <laughs> it's a lot of bombs wasted, but, uh, hey, he actually ran into the thing. I'm gonna jump down while he's stunned, but, uh, do it way too late. But luckily I landed on his head and managed to get out of there. The scary situation, for sure. But anyway, here we are on 5-3, the last level of hell, before the, uh, before the final boss. Getting pretty exciting. Things are going well so far, but again, down to 11 bombs, kind of down to the wire there. We can't run out of bombs before getting to the final boss. We need these 11 bombs to carry us through this level, and then once we get to the boss, we get another 24 right away from killing those two henchmen, so we don't have to worry too much about that. But just, you know, having to get through a whole level of hell and kill a shopkeeper with only 11 bombs is kind of scary. And recall that we started, we like at one point in this run, we had like 50, so that's why... I feel like it's so important to kill a black market that has a lot of bombs in it to even consider going to hell because you need so many bombs here. There's so many obstacles that are just so stupidly impossible to pass that you really just want to skip them. That little demon dude is going to have a bad day. And nothing over here and I'm thinking like, do I, can I really afford the bombs it will take to bomb me through, through the wrong way of the level? Probably not. Let's go ahead and check out the right side and see what's going on over here. And there's the last shopkeeper. Clutch bomb. Yes. He's dead. And we are moving on to King Yama himself. The final boss of Spelunky. The final boss of hell. Pretty exciting. The last time I got here, I managed to kill him with no experience whatsoever. But then I didn't leave the door, which was awful. So it's nice to have a rematch here. Kill that vampire immediately. Kill the dudes sneak out, grab their bomb boxes to so make sure there are no skulls coming down really quick. And we'll come up here, this time on the same side as the exit, which seems like a, uh, a solid strategy rather than like fighting him on the opposite side from the exit and then having to go and, you know, go the other way. Anyway, we're going to climb up here. I'm being really cautious because I don't want to accidentally open myself up to damage from the falling skulls. So if I stand down here, I should be safe, but also how do I damage him? I don't really know. I, we popped up his popped off his hand there, so he's missing that. And uh, I just keep on kind of throwing shotgun bullets in there, but I'm not sure entirely what I'm supposed to do at this point. I'm a little bit confused. There's still some vampires up there that we have to be careful of. And I'm just kind of waiting for something to happen. Doesn't seem like he's going to do anything except for continuing to stomp, so I'm like, okay, here's what I probably have to do, is go over to the other side... And oh god, this fucking vampire. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Having some harrowing uh, interactions with vampires down there. But anyway, here's what I'm thinking. Like, I have to come up here, kill the other hand, 
And then maybe he won't be able to drop those fucking skulls on me and I'll be able to safely attack his head. So I come up here. This is a dangerous place. I realize too late that there's not really anywhere I can go. I do drop my shotgun, unfortunately, but I stick the hand and it is gone. And I'm like, okay, now I don't have to worry about skulls anymore, right? I go and grab my shotgun and I climb up and, oh, nope, definitely still have to worry about skulls. So <laughs> I've, at this point, I'm a little bit confused about what is going on with the skull mechanic because I thought it was his hands that, was causing, that were causing the skulls to fall. But that's obviously not the case. So I'm just kind of hiding out here. I want to kill this vampire. There we go. And then just kind of hang out. And I realize that like the layout over on this side is just bad. Like the fucking... The... Um, what am I talking about here? The spikes on that one thing were like perfectly positioned to just fuck me up. So I decided to come back to the, the safer side and try to battle him from over here. Also, I'm right next to the door now, so I don't have to worry about having to trek my way over here after he dies. But I come over here, hit him with a couple bombs. Good stuff. Just wait a little bit longer. And why would I do that? That's that's the biggest uh, question for me. I think I was going up there to try to do some like sideways bombs. What am I doing? Oh man, and then, uh, oh, was, but I saw there what he did. He slams his head up against the ceiling and that's what causes the skulls to fall. So the hands aren't really necessary at all. He's always going to make the skulls fall, which is real shitty. That's his most potent attack, I feel. So we're going to stick another couple bombs to his head. He's dead! Yama is dead. Fuck everything. We're getting out of there. I know, I know. I know there's a whole bunch of rubies in that room that I could have picked up. But fuck that. <laughs> this is... This is the one time I had to do it to get the achievement, so I don't feel bad at all about immediately leaving that room and not worrying at all about picking up drops. Anyway, here's the final cutscene. Yang is telling us that journey is its own reward, and mastery is the greatest treasure of them all. Well, okay, so gold is pretty nice too. And he's going to give us a big, uh, like, treasure thing. I don't really know what that is, like a trophy almost? Like just a giant gold cup of gold. Apparently, uh, that's what's in the bottom of hell. Just a whole bunch of gold. But anyway, there we go. Beat hell. Uh, for the first ever off-camera recorded run, which is pretty cool. Final score? Three hundred sixty-three thousand. Not too shabby. Definitely not the greatest hell run I've ever seen, or even... It's not even really that good. There's an achievement for getting 500,000 that I'll need to get later. But at this point, I'm happy with just having completed hell. That is really, really, really nice. So thank you guys for watching this really exciting run that I'm happy to have uh, been able to share with you guys. Sorry I didn't live commentate it, but I had no way of knowing at the time that this would happen. And also, I, like I said, I couldn't do commentary while I was recording. That was the whole reason I was uh, doing this instead of recording something else. But anyway, thank you guys for watching this run of Spelunky. I'm going to let the credits roll and shut up for a little while. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.